Doing good people. This is the A Bit Animal. Okay, so today's game is the direct sequel to a game that I covered earlier in the summer of A Bit, and probably one of the more beloved series on the NES and in gaming. Period. Um, this particular title has been the subject of much controversy over the years. And it's a very divisive title because some people think that it's a great game. Some people think it's utter detritus. Um, and then there are some who are just, they think it's just good because it's different. Um, it's a side-scrolling action-adventure game. Um, it features some RPG elements, some, um, some item grinding, things like that. Um, and it also features some of the more messed up, <laughs> uh, some of the more messed up bits of omitted information in gaming history, uh, as far as level design goes. This game, like I said, has been the subject of a lot of controversy. And when I tell you what game it is, you'll understand why. Today's game, yeah, you know, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest. Now, Simon's Quest is set a little after the events of the first Castlevania game. Um, you kill Dracula, but, you know, Dracula never truly stays dead. And Dracula has put a curse on Simon Belmont. In order to lift the curse, Simon has to find the parts of Dracula's body that are scattered throughout the countryside and bring them back to Castlevania reassemble them bring Dracula back to life and kill him again I know it's really convoluted but whatever so it's your traditional Castlevania game in terms of the fact that it's side-scrolling um, they're but that's really where the similarities to the first game end. You, um, it's a really non-linear game in, in the sense that you can go to any point on the map at any given time. Because it's side-scrolling though, it can get kind of confusing. And if you don't have a map, i.e. Um, an NES game atlas or a walkthrough from game facts or something like that you'll get you'll get confused easily um, thankfully there's a set, uh, password feature on this game it was the first game in the Castlevania series with a password save feature um, it was a pretty long password but not, not, no longer than the one in Metroid or the one in Kid Icarus so it is what it is as far as the items that you have to collect, they are scattered within five different mansions. And the parts that you, of Dracula that you have to find are his eye, his nail, his rib, his heart, and his ring. I don't understand the ring part. It's not a part of his body, but it's Castlevania. I'm not trying to understand. Um, there are also a huge variety of weapons that you can collect in this game. Um, different f types of knives, throwing knives, um, garlic, laurels, there's a, a fireball that you can throw. Like, you can literally throw a fireball. Holy water. Um, there are no cross boomerangs in this one. There's no stop watching this one and there's no axe in this one however there is a diamond and the diamond is probably my favorite weapon in this game and probably one of my favorite weapons in Castlevania um, it works like the like the um, like the rebound stone in Symphony of the, of the Night in a way where it'll 
bounce it'll bounce off of different objects for a period of time but it's it moves a lot slower but it's just as strong um, there are also different types of whips there's a flame whip your leather whip thorn whip um, a morning star you know different weapons um, and this was the first Castlevania to introduce different weapon types now the problem comes in because there are portions in this game that just feel unfair like in the mansions there are blocks that there are trick blocks in the floor where you'll walk across one and it'll be a false floor you'll fall into some water and die um, there are trick walls where you can walk through a wall not realize if you walk through a wall there are uh, there are points in the game like uh, in Jam Wasteland if you don't have a walkthrough you wouldn't know that you're supposed to equip a certain item and kneel in front of this wall for 15 seconds there's a um, I believe it's Yuba Lake you if you don't have a walkthrough you won't know that you're supposed to kneel at the at the edge of Yuba Lake and it'll recede and there'll be a stairway and Konami I don't know they put all these secrets in the game and it blew up in their face because a lot of gamers especially now this game comes under more criticism now than it did back then because more gamers are restless now they want thing they want you to tell them what's going on and nobody wants to expect something like this in a game especially considering that this was a little bit before Zelda 2 if I remember correctly or around the same time as Zelda 2 so this type of stuff wasn't expected in a game at that point but games like Simon's Quest and Zelda 2 did these things um, and it's also interesting that the final level of Simon's Quest may be the easiest level in gaming history that's including the fight with Dracula the level is completely abandoned. There's nobody or nothing in, inside of Castlevania. When you make it to Dracula, you'll give up the five body parts, he'll appear, and he doesn't really fight you. He just bounces around the screen. He's an easy kill. Um, and Oh, there! Oh, and one more thing. There are multiple endings to Simon's Quest based on the amount of time it takes you to beat the game. So that's another. That was another cool part, part of this game. But Simon's Quest, for all of its faults, I like Simon's Quest. I think it's a cool game. It's not my favorite in the series. That'll be um, a quarter flip between Castlevania IV and Symphony of the Night. But it's a good game, and it was actually a decent follow-up to the first title in the series. And a great setup for that, that amazing prequel in Castlevania 3. This has been the 8-Bit Animal, and I will catch you beautiful people tomorrow.